Motrolix. All right, let's take a look at the interior of the 2022 GMC Sierra Denali Ultimate. As I open the door, you'll see the step. It's a deployable uh, running board that comes out and there's a little button here that you can swing this step back towards the rear and that will let you access the bed from the side of the truck. So I'll swing it back now and there it is. So right away, what we see here is the Alpine Umber interior colorway, which is unique to the Denali Ultimate. This colorway features full grain leather appointments throughout the entire cabin. I'll kind of give you a rundown of the, uh, the materials here piece by piece in a bit. But let me just give you an overview first. So here it is. Here's that interior. It's beautiful brown leather. Really nice textures all the way throughout. Anytime you see this, it's got nice stitching throughout as well. There's the ultimate sill plate along with the Mount Denali longitudinal coordinates here. And the seats. Let's take a look at these. These are 16-way power seats. You can actually see the seat itself massaging right now. I left the massager on. There it is. So that Denali Ultimate badge that we saw here on the sill also is found right here on the seat itself with the longitudinal and latitudinal coordinates there and same thing here on the door ultimate denali coordinates right there as well one of the more interesting details that we'll notice here on the interior of the denali ultimate is this so these are embossed and laser etched across the entire interior these are topographical maps of the summit of Mount Denali. And uh, they're found here on the, on the doors, on the door inserts rather. Uh, they are also found on the actual seat backs right here. And if you look closely at the center armrest, they are found right here as well. And then if we make our way over to the passenger side of the truck we'll see that the Sierra Denali Ultimate also has open pour Paldau wood this is real wood uh, so very authentic and as you can see it also has the same topographical elements here there is the latitude and longitude as well and then the pattern repeats itself here on the passenger seat. So you do have the ultimate badge followed by the topographical elements here as well. And then same thing here. So door sill, coordinates, and on the passenger side door, the front passenger side door, all of these topogra topographical elements here as well. I'm a really big fan of this stitching. I'm a big fan of this open pour pulled out wood. This looks really nice. Again, this brown coordinates here, there, and then throughout the interior. Uh, I should notice just a little thing that happened to our tester. <laughs> it's a minor thing, but the, uh, the door lock button on the passenger front passenger door kind of falls through. So even if I don't push it hard, that happens. Minor thing, I'm sure this can be fixed pretty easily, but it did happen nonetheless. 
So the open porpoise dow trim. Let me show you the seats a bit. There's quite a few interesting things happening here as far as the seat is concerned, including this. So that you know the primary uh, alpine umber uh, color is here, and then you have this nice white stitching, or rather piping with white stitching behind it. Same thing, white stitching, and then the piping running through all the way down. And then this repeats itself, stitching with piping. There is this very nice stitch right here. This is quite noticeable, and I'm a big fan of it. And then again, white stitching throughout, all the way through the seat back itself, and then onto the seat cushion as well. These are 16-way power-adjustable front seats with a massaging function, and these are class-exclusive. So that's pretty nice. Uh, the adjustments for the seats are located here. This control is pretty simple. This one is simple as well. This one I've had a bit of a hard time getting accustomed to using. Um, this actually took me three weeks to figure out how to use across three different uh, 2022 GMC Sierras. It's not the, uh, the most intuitive control, but you do get used to it after a while. All right, let me show you where else the uh, etching takes place. In fact, I'll unlock the doors here. So that uh, Mount Denali topographical element etching also takes place here at the rear door right there. And then as well over here on the uh, seat back of the front two seats. And then if we take a look at the actual rear seats, the same thing takes place. So topographical elements throughout here. And uh, this is the same kind of pattern that repeats itself on the front two seats. Interestingly, the backs of the front seats are finished in black. So you do get the alpine umber color on the front, but black at the rear. I think it's a very nice color combination overall. Here's a closer look at the uh, open pour Paul Dow wood trim. And uh, it really is a nice accent because really the this kind of darker finish on the wood itself, it creates a very distinctive uh, kind of color blend here. And, um, the, you know, the, the additional graining that the team added is quite nice as well. So I'm, I'm quite a fan of this open pour Paul Dow wood trim. I should also note that there is a secondary trim here, so it's not all wood. There is this piece right here, which is kind of like a faux, I don't know if it's kind of a faux aluminum or a faux carbon fiber finish, but it is present and accounted for, and it runs kind of the, the length of the cockpit here. Let me get in right now and show you how that looks. So... It's essentially, it runs here, and we also see it over here at the bottom, at the base of the steering wheel itself. Uh, I think that's really it, besides the uh, besides this piece. This is the only other piece where we see that kind of trim. Okay, beyond that, the instrument panel. So this piece here, it is leather trimmed, and uh, it does really look nice. I am again a fan of the stitching and piping treatments here. Uh, that does look pretty nice. And uh, the door panels, these are full grain leather wrapped. I think that's worth mentioning. Another interesting element that is part of the Denali Ultimates interior is found here. So this is a full suede, or really a premium micro suede uh, headliner. So it's the headliner, the visors, they get the same kind of treatment, um, and the A and B pillar trim. So if you look at the A pillar here, that's how that looks right here. And then the same thing takes place at the B pillars right there. The A and B pillar handles, so these handles here as well as 
the ones right there. These are leather wrapped, so this is something that is unique uh, to the Sierra Denali Ultimate. The speakers. This is an all-new 12-speaker Bose Premium uh, series with center point surround technology and it also features audio pilot and the rich bass woofer uh, that's located out back so there's quite a few speakers here you can see them here at the a pillars right there within the doors that's i believe a tall one or two so there's quite a bit of speakers here including here on the a pillars integrated here into the doors same thing takes place on the passenger side right there and then that continues on at the rear with a speaker grill at the top plus a larger speaker grill right there at the bottom of the door. I am a fan, I have to say, I'm a fan of the way that uh, the design team treated these speaker grills, the metallic ones. Take a look at this. These look really nice. They obviously have the Bose badging there. Really fine attention to detail. Let me try to focus on that for you. Take a look at that. I just really like the way that these are done from a perforation standpoint. And the same thing takes place here. So this speaker grill I'm a big fan of. Just looks good, you know. Uh, obviously the sound itself, the sound system, it sounds great. Uh, but the, uh, the speaker system itself looks good to boot. So that's always a plus. Okay, beyond that, there is also the rear camera mirror. This is standard on the Sierra Denali Ultimate. And the 15-inch uh, diagonal multicolor head-up display, which you see right there, that is also standard on a Sierra Denali Ultimate. And finally, the last kind of piece de resistance that is standard on this truck is this power sunroof. Now, this is a single pane sunroof. There is no secondary or uh, second pane. There is no other kind of sunroof that is present here uh, or even offered for that matter, uh, even as an option. And the reason for that, as uh, the engineers had explained to me a few months ago, the reason for that is simply because the, uh, the structure of the roof, or rather the cab itself, it is configured to essentially have metal in place of where the secondary sunroof pane would go. So um, this entire cab, not just this rear area, but the entire cab, it is structured to uh, have metal here. If the team were to add a sunroof there, uh, and they didn't plan on doing that from the very beginning, so if they were to do that, they would have to re-engineer uh, a lot of the structure of the cab itself because of the lost structural integrity that will take place by replacing this piece of metal with glass. So that's not going to happen, but it will be something that will happen for the uh, upcoming Sierra uh, EV. So now that I've gone through all of the uh, unique elements uh, and standard elements uh, and features of the Sierra Denali Ultimate, let me give you a tour of what is essentially the rest of the interior. I'd like to kind of do a piece by piece uh, kind of tour for you. And a lot of this will be common to, uh, to other Sierra models, although uh, of course not in this kind of trim. The, uh, the Alpine Umber and the Poldau wood trim that is obviously exclusive to the, D the, the Sierra Denali Ultimate. Okay, so starting with the door here, uh, this is a soft material here. I am a fan of it, but the problem with this material here is if you do rest, if you drive and, and you rest your elbow on it, there's kind of a bit of a give that creates this kind of sound. Um, again, the material itself is fine. It seems to me like there is some kind of a spacer or spacing between this material and whatever is below it, which is this hard plastic material, and um, this creates this kind of noise. So not ideal it is there the wood trim that we talked about this nice brown leather here um, this is it's actually I'm not sure if this is leather but it's certainly made to look like it uh, this is a nice soft piece so the elbow rest is uh, soft this piece it all looks tasteful pretty good uh, the locks 
the seat memory controls and easy exit function right here. All of the window controls here. This is, of course, the Denali or the uh, ultimate rather the ultimate badge that we had gone over before. Here's the curious thing about these window controls. So these two front ones are auto. I'm sorry. They are one touch up and down. So I just need to hit them once and the window will go down. I don't have to hold the button down. Same thing goes for winding it up. I just hold it, or I'm sorry, I just pull it, and it goes up. Now, these two rear ones, as you can see, they're marked differently. These are automatic, these are not. So these are automatic to wind down, like so. But if I wanna wind this window back up, what I'm gonna have to do is actually hold this button down. Now, I don't know about you, but for an $80,000 truck, on an $80,000 truck, I would expect quite a bit more. I'd expect all four windows to have one touch function, whether it's up or down. There is power folding mirrors. I do appreciate that right here. So this is right there. Boom, the mirrors fold like so. You can unfold them the other way and there they go. This is the uh, lockout for the rear window so that whoever's sitting back there can or can operate it. Right now I have it to disable the controls back there and then this is of course the mirror controls these are power mirrors both left and right and then beyond that the door panel consists of essentially these three storage spaces i brought a, a bottle here uh, so that you could see just kind of from a sizing standpoint this is the bottle put it in here there it is and then i can also uh, place it in here. So it's quite a bit of room here in the door itself um, This panel does give a little bit so you can stick something in there and it will kind of uh, Play with you and then this uh, this is just an open space here. I'm guessing for an umbrella or some other items all right uh, Moving on to the actual inside of the cabin. So Let me show you what's taking place here so what we see here is all of the new screens, and I will have a separate uh, tour uh, about all three of these screens. So this 13.4 inch screen in the center, as well as this 12.3 inch screen um, in the uh, instrument panel, and then the 15 inch head up display. I'm gonna have very detailed uh, tours of all three screens um, in, a, uh, in a separate segment here. But they are present and accounted for. They are very uh, easy to use, and uh, the graphics are crisp. They're quite fast. All three of these displays, so they're not. You're not waiting, you know, on on something to load. You're not waiting for something to, you know, something gets stuck or frozen. All of these three displays work seamlessly, and they work really well, uh, in my experience thus far. Beyond that, uh, there is the overhead console here. So you have your home link right there, the reading lights. So you just hit one of them to turn them on and hit it again to turn it off. Uh, you do have the, uh, the, door the door lights control. So if you want the uh, lights to uh, be enabled when the door is opened or not, this turns on all the cabin lights right here. And then this slides the rear window. There is, yes, indeed a power rear window here. There it is, close that down. And then these are the slide and tilt uh, sunroof controls right there. OnStar controls are located here and then this is the passenger airbag uh, status indicator again for the front passenger. We have a set of AC vents right here at the top of the center stack followed by the 13.4 inch center display. There is a uh, actual actual uh, volume knob right there and then a physical home button. So you can get to that very easily. This physical home button is duplicated by this button right there. Uh, from there, moving down onto and into the center stack, we have the, uh, so first and foremost, the engine start and stop button. This is one of my favorite buttons, I have to say. It's uh, it's nice and big. It, it feels good to the touch. It got repositioned from being here before on the pre-refresh models. And this is just so great because 
you get in, you know exactly what you're hitting, you know exactly where it is. You don't even have to look to hit it because of its size. And it, again, it feels good. It looks good as well. So uh, A plus on, on the execution of the engine start stop button in the 2022 GMC Sierras. Uh, again, with the, with the refreshed interiors. Uh, and then to the right of the engine stop start button, we have the HVAC control panel right here with, again, hard physical buttons. These are not soft buttons that are done <clears throat> like some other competitors do it uh, through the screen. They are done through hard controls, nice, big, uh, easy to read uh, knobs here. You can get these. You can, you can use them without even uh, looking at what you're doing. And uh, the seat controls here, so seat ventilation, seat heating just for the back of the seat, or the seat back rather, seat heating for the seat cushion and the seat back, and the, um, the, the heater for the steering wheel control is there. The rest of the HVAC controls are here, and then the seat ventilation and heating controls are repeated for the front passenger. And then ultimately below that, you have the switch bank of buttons, uh, all of these are here. This is the, the lane keep assist, the park assist, auto engine stop start. I am not a fan of that, so I'm going to disable it. Tailgate drop. This is for the power tailgate. Uh, this is the hazard lights, traction control, and stability control settings. And then hill descent control. This button right here, this is a curious button. So this one, it drops all four of the cabin windows automatically all at once that's great. The problem is it doesn't really have an inverse. So once you've dropped all these windows, there is no way for you to go back up, right? This button only goes down. It doesn't actually wind them back up. So in order to wind them back up, you have to go over here and hold down. So the first two, like I mentioned earlier, these first two buttons are one touch up while these first or the last two for the rear windows, they are not one touch up. They're actually, uh, you have to hold them. So it's a little strange to me that you can drop all four windows all at once, but you can't raise them up all at once. It's a little strange. Nevertheless, below that, there is a uh, lined cubby. This is the same kind of liner that is used uh, for the bottom of uh, the liner in the doors right there in those pockets there. And there's a set of cup holders here, again, lined with that same rubber material. Uh, these are flexible, so you can fit a bigger cup in here if need be, and it does have this space uh, between the two cup holders that enables the uh, like a you know a thermos or a mug with a handle. Uh, outside of that, USB-C port, USB I'm sorry USB-A port, USB-C port. There is a little storage area here. You can actually remove this floor liner, this liner right there, and then that brings us to this new shifter. So this is an electronic shifter, meaning that there is no physical linkage between this and the transmission. And uh, to use it, you essentially put your foot on the brake, hold down the side button, and if, as you can see the pattern here, uh, right now it's in park. So that's the, the park is activated via just pressing down this top button here. Uh, and then from here, you essentially press down this button and you can go to drive. And if you pull it back without pressing this button, it will go to L. And L is what enables us to use these paddle shifters right here. So here is, it will go up, you know, three, four, and then here's the one to go down. So I went down from two to one. Okay. From here, I can move this forward, and that will put it into neutral, again, without pressing the button. And if I want to go to reverse, it's going to tell me press the shifter let me show that to you again press the shifter side button to shift so in order for me to actually go into a, into a forward or a reverse gear i have to hold down the side button so boom now i'm in reverse and there is the camera i have the tailgate down right now that's why it looks a little bit scary so essentially this shifter is very convenient it's a lot faster to use it than to go through all of the gates of the column shifter that was here before, or just even if this was a traditional console mounted shifter that you would have to go through park to reverse to neutral to drive, you don't have to go through all of that here. You just go essentially backward to drive, forward to reverse, and P 
for park. All right, trailer uh, brake gain controls are right here. And uh, before I continue going into the center uh, console area, what I will show you is this. Now, take a listen. So this happens on this side and a little bit, not so much, but happens on this side. Now, there it is. So you just squeeze these together. This is not a big deal because I've not heard this really vibrate or make any other kind of noise ever in my week of driving this truck or my previous week driving the AT4X, which has the same kind of uh, configuration here. They both do this. So uh, I've not had my knee rub against this or my leg rub against it and make this noise. It's just something I discovered while feeling for these things. Nevertheless, it is here, but again, to me, uh, not a big deal. Moving down here, what we see is an inductive phone charger right here. And then, of course, the center console lid. It is released by this button right here. This does feel good. I am a big fan of the metal treatment here. And then we open that up. That reveals this storage tray. I have all kinds of my goodies in here right now. And then this reveals the, uh, the actual storage compartment. So there is a light back here along with a 110 volt household style outlet and a set of USB ports, USB-A and then USB-C right here. Right, so that brings us to the steering wheel. So let's take a look at the wheel itself and uh, see what's taking place here. So over here we have, to the left of the wheel, we have the actual AC vent right and then the various controls here so this is the electronic parking brake this is a push setup so you just push it uh, to set it and if you want to release it you go to the brake pedal hit the brake and this gets released you have the drive settings here so you can go to auto for high uh, for low to uh, high and you can obviously uh, go to trailer mode and you can change the drive mode selector right here. So the drive modes can go from sport to normal to off-road. And then those are the three. Okay. And then to the right of that, you do have some other controls uh, here with a similar style uh, of a rotary knob. So at the top left, you have the perimeter lighting that enables that. Uh, to the right of that, you have the, uh, this one right here, you have the uh, bed lighting. To the left of that at the bottom, this is the dimming, and uh, so this makes the dimmer, and this makes it brighter as far as the cabin lights and the cabin backlighting. And then this is essentially the light control, so you can go from auto to the, um, uh, the DRLs to the lights being on, and then you have the fog lights down here. I'm just going to set mine to auto. And then finally, up here, you have the HUD controls. So these are the buttons that control the head-up display. Right, back to the steering wheel. The steering wheel itself, this unit, like I mentioned, uh, the Sierra Denali Ultimate has uh, Super Cruise as standard. So this is the Super Cruise indicator, the status indicator that tells us what's taking place. And um, the wheel itself, it's a little thin. You know, for such a large truck, such a burly vehicle, this steering wheel, even though it's well done, I like the stitching and all that. Take a look at that. I mean, the stitching is very tastefully done. Uh, the wheel itself feels good. I, again, this trim that we were talking about that starts over here and then ends and runs all the way through there. This same kind of trim is also present and accounted for here. The problem is uh, that this wheel is still just a little too 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 thin the, the 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 diameter is a bit too thin for such a large vehicle i would have preferred personally at least a thicker diameter rim uh, on the wheel itself over here on the left you have the uh the uh, super cruise controls or the cruise control settings rather and then this is the super cruise button this is the following distance indicator 
Denali badge right here, dead center, in case you ever forget what it is that you are driving. Uh, push to talk here, end call or mute uh, of the system. And this is the five-way uh, joystick style toggle to control the, uh, uh, the actual uh, uh, IP. Behind there are the paddle shifters that I had already discussed, and then behind that there is also a set of buttons, both on this side of the wheel and behind the other. So these buttons right here, they control the volume, so I'm just going to turn that down so you have the volume up and the volume down, and on the side, on the left side here, you have the same kinds of buttons, if I can show them to you right there. And these control uh, presets or tracks forward and back. So that's really it with uh, in, in regards to the steering wheel and uh, the cockpit for the driver. I should also mention the uh, sun visors. So again, just like the headliner, these are finished in a nice micro suede uh, finish. And here they are. There is a, uh, a little document or a clip holder right there that's cool very useful and then LED lighting right there uh, on the actual uh, mirror itself there are overhead mics as well uh, here here and here now some of these are used for voice input uh, for OnStar or for Bluetooth or for Apple CarPlay or Android Auto while others are used for uh, the Bose Autopilot uh, solution that essentially minimizes the, uh, the amount of uh, noise in the cabin by pumping in the inverse of the, the, the sounds and noises present. And finally here, what I will say is that the dual glove box uh, setup continues for the 2022 model year. Here is the release button for this top one, there it is, and then the bottom one just continues on this way. Okay, so that's essentially the front row. Let us take a look at the rear. Oh, before I go, I should note that, uh, let's talk about the materials here since I gave you a rundown of the materials uh, on the door. Let me tell you a bit about the materials here up top. So. Uh, this here, I mean, the whole everything except for this material, which is that this faux kind of aluminum, faux brushed aluminum piece. Um, everything else here is kind of well wrapped, and it's not hard. Although this material, it's not as not as hard as this one. Uh, it certainly looks better than this one as well, but um, and it's a little bit softer, but it's it's definitely not hard. Uh, to me, this is not a big deal. You're never going to be touching this um, anyway. So that's fine. And then the same thing applies to essentially this, this top part of the dash uh, itself. Okay, I think now we are ready to go to the rear. So we're gonna open the door. The deployable assist step comes out to greet us. That's nice, thank you very much for that. And let's take a look at the rear. So there's plenty of space here in the rear seat. This is a large cabin um, you know personally I'm 5'9 I do have the front seat currently pushed back all the way so this is not where I would be sitting it's actually pushed back all the way uh, let's take a look at the door first uh, let's start with the window so one of the things that I really do like about this window and I forgot that I have the, uh, the rear passengers locked out from controlling this so let me turn that off Okay, so what I do like about the windows here is that they go all the freaking way down, which is awesome. You know, they don't get stuck and like stay halfway or up here somewhere or down a third. They go all the way down, which is just great. I think that's the way, I mean, if, if physically if they can do it and fit the window in the door, uh, then everyone should do that. Over here, it's kind of the same setup as at the front, just slightly with, you know, obviously reconfigured for the rear doors, so slightly different. Um, interestingly, this rear door does not have this cheap plastic piece that the front one does. So this one, nice, okay. 
nice and soft, but again, it does it does make this kind of uh, bouncy, clicky noise. But then ahead of it is this just regular cheap plastic piece that seems to be from uh, Kmart circa the 1990s. Now, the rear door, I just realized this, the rear door does not have this. Instead, it has the same material. It has this soft one here, just like the front door has on, up until the front. But then the piece here, it is actually covered in a higher quality material. This is the piece that should have been used up there as well. Just to be clear, this piece should have been used here to line all of this. Because again, on an $80,000 truck that essentially is the Cadillac of pickups, there is no room for that kind of material. So the rear doors actually get a better treatment here, which is kind of interesting. All right, so we have this here. We have the Paul Dow wood, metallic accent here. All right, the door handle here. I already mentioned the Bose speaker grill that I'm a fan of. This is soft here, very nice, soft as well. And it does, uh, it, it does provide a good amount of cushioning for the elbow. The window control here. This pull handle, it does have a nice bottom. So it's not, uh, you can store an item here and not worry about it falling through. And uh, again, nice stitching all the way through here. More stitching here and a pipe running through here. Very nice. Here is the uh, Mount Denali topographical elements. Now the rest of the door, just like at the front, these are hard plastics here. Again, hard plastics. Uh, I believe that the uh, the theory that uh, they're they're following here is anything that is uh, above the hip point and above. So hip point and above, that should be uh, high quality and, and very noticeable that it's high quality. Anything below the hip point. So if you can see where you're going to be sitting, that's the hip point there. So anything below essentially this piece. It can go to a hard plastic. Uh, there is a storage area here for the water bottle. Let me bring that over real quick. There we are. Putting that right in there. Boom. Fits. And then right there. That's the um, this storage area here. All right, moving on to the actual interior. Like I said, there is plenty of room here. This is with this seat all the way back. If I were to configure this seat to my driving position, which is quite a bit closer, again, I'm 5'9", so I would sit right around here. I just move that up, and you can see how much space there is with the seat moved to my position, so you gain uh, some more room still. All right, taking a look at the ceiling here. This is the cutout. This cutout is not for a sunroof. There was never going to be a sunroof in here for the T1 trucks. Um, and for anyone who doesn't know, the T1 is the generation and platform on which the Sierra, as well as its corporate stablemate, the Silverado, uh, are built on starting with the 2019 model year. So this is actually for increased headroom. That's the purpose of this cutout right here. All right, from there, leather wrapped handle. Again, we see the micro suede uh, headliner here as well. Very nice. Um, we have the, uh, the back of the seat that I mentioned. This is black. This is Alpine Umber. And the front of these seats at the front, obviously, is also Alpine Umber. Here we have some more of these topographical Mount Denali elements etched into the back of the, uh, the front seat backs. And from there, what else can I say about this? Well, we do have the, uh, the actual rear seats here, tall headrest. It does drop down via this button. Oop. Okay. That's a feature common to all Sierras, uh, with this kind of cap configuration. There is a storage area here that you pull on just by using this little tab here. And there is the storage area. It's kind of hidden unless you know about it. Close that down. And uh, from there, there is the back of the center console. So back here you have a set of cup holders. Uh, let's take our famous water bottle and 
put it into here. It fits, as you can see, very nicely. There is a set of overhead lights. These are LED lights, as well as a clothes hanger hook right there. Um, from here, AC vents at the back of the uh, panel here, uh, rather at the back of the console. USB-C port, USB-A port, these are charge only ports, and the controls for heating the two rear outboard seats. That's really essentially it back here. Um, again, plenty of space here. Again, I'm 5'9". This is with the front seat configured to where I would drive. And check this out. I mean, there's like palatial amounts of rear seat legroom here. And finally, this seat does flip up to reveal a nice storage area. So I can just, with my hand, flip this up like so. And that brings out this right here. So there is some, there's the uh, fuel filler neck for the Capos fuel filler. Uh, I believe this is the stuff for the trailer ring, the TPMS sensors uh, for the trailer, and then all kinds of equipment to uh, take care of a flat if you do get one. That seat also flips up. Uh, I just haven't come around there yet, but if you'd like me to, I will do so right now. Right, so here we are on the passenger side of the truck. God, I love these deploying running boards. I really do. All right, flip up, and there it is, and there's the jack. So that's just about it as far as the interior of the 2022 GMC Sierra Denali Ultimate is concerned. It is a very nice interior. I do uh, like the combination of brown, uh, with the black, with the white stitching and piping. Overall, it is a very good cabin. But I have to say, just from a, if we were to think out loud here, if this is GMC's range topping model, again, this is the Denali of the Denalis, right? This is the Denali Ultimate. So if this is that kind of a vehicle, then maybe they should have gone a bit further and you know, removed some of those things like the hard materials on the doors and, uh, you know, removed some of the, uh, the other issues that I described. Um, overall, that, that would have, I think, been something that um, I would have liked to see and I still would like to see uh, with subsequent model years as uh, this truck continues into the future. Motrolics.